There is nowhere on the island Henry loves more than the forest. It's his favorite landmark. From the lush green trees to the peaceful sounds of the Sodor wildlife. likes to stop and rest his wheels here. But first, his driver must get permission from the signalman and sign a special book. This way, engines can pass by on a different track avoiding any nasty accidents. Once, long ago, Henry was very upset. The forest had been ravaged by a terribly fierce storm. But thanks to the efforts of Toby, Trevor and Terence, it was soon well on its way to growing back again. One afternoon, Henry was heading for his last job of the day. As he made his way through the yards, he suddenly let out a very loud, wheezing cough. Bear was collecting trucks nearby. Hello, that sounds nasty, he called. Perhaps it's time you had another overhaul, Henry? Nonsense! I'm as fit as a fiddle, and besides, this delivery to Vickerstown can't wait! Henry chuckled away. He knew Bear was only joking. At the timber yard, the men took a long time loading the train. The Vickerstown shed needed the new wood to mend its supports. Henry sighed and closed his eyes, enjoying the cool forest breeze, the rustle of the leaves and the tweeting of the birds. All of a sudden, Henry's driver blew his whistle loudly. Wake up, sleepyhead, he called. Time to go! Oh, you could have woken me a little more gently, grumbled Henry. Henry quickly built up steam, but as he started, he coughed violently again. This time, sparks flew from his funnel and landed beside the line. Henry's crew hadn't seen, nor had the workmen. Bear was right, thought Henry, as he went on his way. Perhaps I should get this cough looked at. Soon, everyone had gone home for tea. Everything was peaceful and still. All except for the plume of smoke no one had noticed. A few hours later, Edward was on his way home from working with Boko and the twins. All of a sudden, he rounded the bed and gasped. Oh no! He whistled. Fire! Edward dashed bravely by the flames and headed for the nearest signal box. The driver soon told the signalman what had happened, and quickly he phoned for the fire brigade. sound asleep in the shed, when suddenly a shrill whistle woke them up. Edward hurried in and screeched to a halt. What's got into you? Gordon yawned. 
You know it isn't safe to race at the speed at this time of night. Especially at your age, chuckled James. Never mind that, panted Edward, catching his breath. It's the forest! It's on fire! Henry's feelings were beyond words. We'll need your help with the breakdown train, Henry, Edward added. Oh, yes, yes, of course, Henry answered gravely. He was soon following Edward with the cranes in several flatbeds. As Edward and Henry stopped at the station before the forest, Harold zoomed overhead. He was carrying bags of water and dirt to douse the flames. Don't worry, chaps, Harold called bravely. We'll have this little blaze out in no time. Henry doubtfully watched the helicopter buzz away. He could see the situation was now much more serious than that. Several fire engines passed the station and people came out of their houses to see what the matter was. Eventually, the firemen gave the order for all homes near the forest to be evacuated. The line had to be closed too, as it was no longer safe. What could have started such a huge fire like this? wondered Edward. Henry suddenly shuddered, remembering his cough at the timber yards. I must have sent up a spark from my funnel, he gasped. Henry couldn't believe it. He had started the fire! And this beloved forest was now covered in a thick black cloud of dust! Even with the valiant of efforts of Harold, the fire only worsened. After several long hours, the fire brigade began to bring the flames under control. And then, at last, the fire was out. When Henry brought the breakdown train to the forest, he tried not to look at the devastation, but he couldn't help himself. There were burnt, blackened, and bare trees all around him. A small tear crept into Henry's eye as he realized his favorite place was once again no more. Fortunately, no one had been injured in the fire. All the homes nearby were safe, and so were all the animals. It took some time to clear the mess up. Engines, tractors, and lorries toiled hard all week, tearing up the old branches, and hauling them away. Days later, the fat controller came to see Henry. Henry spoke first. 
I'm truly sorry, sir. I didn't mean to start the fire. It could have put the whole island in danger. And that doesn't bear thinking about Don't it. Don't worry, Henry, said the Fat Controller kindly. I realize you didn't mean to. I'm just glad the fire was kept under control and everyone came out of this safely. But it has to be said, trees growing near railway lines are very dangerous things. We should all be careful when we go through the forest. I'll have the workmen reduce the amount of trees planted near the line. Next day, with the clean-up teams gone, Henry inspected what was left of the forest, which was very little. His driver sighed. If it weren't for the odd stump, you'd hardly know there'd been trees here a week ago. Henry said nothing and just shivered a little. The bare hillside meant the air now felt more chilly. Just then, Toby arrived with the first set of new infantries ready for planting. Never mind, he smiled. We can simply start again. It's still your forest, and it will look better than before. And in spite of everything that happened, Henry managed a little smile. <laughs>